This is Neon, and I am here with a very special guest, animation veteran John Celestri. Say hello, Mr. Celestri. Hi, Neon. Hello. All Thanks right. for having me here. Mr. Celestri is going to talk about his experience in the animation industry. Yeah, he's been working in the animation industry for a very long time, and he's got a lot of stories to tell, I'm sure, and uh, we cannot wait to talk to him. So first, we got to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and then we'll be right back. Thinking about printing your own comic books, graphic novel, or manga? We recommend our friends over at Print Ninja. We've been using Print Ninja as long as they've been printing comics and both the quality and price is excellent. Mention Clownfish TV and get an additional 5% overrun of your book order quantity printed for free. For free! That's free books, people. Just mention this offer on the phone or in the additional information box on the quote request form. That's PrintNinja.com or click on the link in the description below. All right, guys, welcome back. This is Neon. I'm here with John Celestri. And we're gonna, yeah, we're going to talk about the animation industry. And uh, John's got a lot of stories. And uh, you know, I'm going to let him lead this one. He's been working in animation for a long time. He worked on a lot of uh, beloved 70s and 80s properties and movies you're probably familiar with, like the Star Wars Holiday Special. He worked on uh, Rock and Roll. He's worked on Herself the Elf. He's Shira. He's been all over the place, and I am really looking forward to having this conversation. Thank you, John, for coming on. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, just to add to that uh, list of things was is uh, the uh, uh, Don Bluth's uh, uh, Space Ace and Dragon's Lair games. Oh my gosh! Yeah, they're bringing those back. I've heard they're arcade one up. If you're familiar with them, they make the uh, the replica arcade machines. Oh. They had, yeah, they're supposed to be bringing Dragon's Lair back out. Well, that's cool. Uh, one uh, 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 death scenes were my specialty. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what the sort of thing. But we'll also add the uh, Batman Zellers commercials that I did. Yeah, yeah, those 80, 80, are cool. 89, Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, you've worked like everywhere. I, I mean, I was I was looking you up on, I knew you did a lot of work for uh, Nirvana, but I was looking you up on IMDb. I'm like, man, he worked on this, he worked on that. And it's like, I mean, literally almost anything I could think of, no matter how obscure back in the 70s and 80s, it seemed like you worked on it. So how did you break into the animation industry? Well, I started, uh, just to answer, explain why it seems like I worked on everything. The industry at that time, the uh, we're talking about 19, you know, the, the 70s and early 80s. There were it was maybe 350 people in the New York City uh, Union animation industry, and maybe another 800 in uh, in, the, in Los Angeles. So you actually knew everybody. Yeah. So everybody rotated from one place to another and you all work together. And, uh, and so that explains why, uh, why it seems like the same names, you know, keep appearing everywhere. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, okay. So, uh, how I got started, I always wanted to be a cartoonist. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, uh, long story short, um, had it more of an academic background, I'm self-taught as an artist. Mm -hmm. uh, as um, I, I learned, I wanted to be a, a, a comic strip artist and a sports uh, sports cartoonist. Um, you know, this during the days of uh, you know of the '60s, where in New York City had about seven newspapers, and everybody had their own cartoonist and what have you. Then, so I thought, well, I can maybe I can get my my my. Uh, uh, get a chance to show my stuff to people there but you know the industry started to change and newspapers started to fold and what have you i decided i, I discovered uh, late in my um my uh, my academic career uh, in terms of being you know like 21 23 22 23 years old that i could do fast sketches mm -hmm. and that's how i learned i i i found out that i could do uh, you know the animation posing, pick, uh, picking up uh, movement, uh, this thing mm -hmm. of that, and uh, and so um, I said, okay, what? How can I use this talent? And I said, I went to the uh, Lincoln Center, uh, the Alice Tully Hall, 
uh, the 50th year, uh, year uh, retrospect uh, re retrospective for Disney, okay. and that's why you know we're talking about when he did the Alice films. Yes, okay. yeah. So, so we're talking, you know, it's 1973 year, uh, yeah, 1973 that that, that happened. The so, 20s. yeah, from the 20s, yeah. and so uh, I saw Peter Pan, uh, you know, there, and they were they were they're screening it, and I said that's what I want to do. You know, and that's when I decided I wanted to be an animator. But I was, you know, I'm 24 years old at the time. Yeah. So that's kind of late to uh, start to start uh, thinking about doing that sort of uh, thing. Um, but yeah, it's so weird how things have changed because now at uh, 24, a lot of kids are just you know getting out, of, they're going into the grad school or just getting out of college. Or uh, it seems like a lot of people now aren't even getting into the industry until they're at least their mid 20s. You know. Well, yeah, but it, it, it's it was it, 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 was a, it was again the seventies are a completely mm -hmm. different oh, time, yeah. you know. Uh, we're all uh, you know back then we were just uh, itching to get out of our apartment, out of our, our family's places, and, and getting our own places and whatnot. I was living on West Seventy Fourth Street in in uh, in in Manhattan in nineteen seventy two. Oh <laughs> my gosh, yeah, and what's you that know, cost now? <laughs> oh, uh, uh, my, my, uh, my, 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 uh, the rent for my apartment back there was on, on the fifth floor, a fourth floor of a four story walk up renovated brownstone on West 74th Street. It was about 265 bucks, you know, a two and a half room apartment. Today, that's going for like 10 times that amount. Oh, easy, you know? easy. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay, so you're in New York, you want to be an animator, and I, I looked, I, I'm out, and I have this pulled up uh, for the people watching this, I'm going to put a link to his, his Indiegogo campaign, uh, I saw a rejection letter from uh, Disney on here, yes. you tried out for Disney, and you were rejected. I tried out for Disney, yep, I, uh, if you could see that, uh, it, uh, on, I, what I did was, I, I did, I went to a, um, I was looking for what kind of school would be, you know, would teach me an mm -hmm. anime, and the only thing that I knew of that was, you know, with there, there was there was a part time thing, or I was just trying to learn something. Was uh, a school of visual arts, mm -hmm. and it had uh, I did a summer course. It was uh, it was only six weeks, one night a week. And it was like you know two hours, a uh, one night a week for six weeks, and that's how I learned animation. Um, I learned some basics there, and the uh, it was taught by a. A, an old uh, um, Terry Tunes and Popeye, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, layout person, Terry Tunes and Paramount Fleischer. And uh, he said, well, here's here's how you do it. And so we learned how to how to uh, run the camera, the Oxbury stand. And, you know, he told you, well, here's your, ex you know, uh, here's your exposure sheet. And this is how to do a storyboard and everything like that. So I had learned all the basics, but I was still teaching myself using an old, it's called an Elmo. It was a, a sound, a eight 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 millimeter Super Eight sound uh, editing machine, and used those old um, uh, Disney had had released sections from their their uh, uh, their features. You know, from Snow White, from Pinocchio, mm -hmm. from, and so I would run it frame by frame to study that. Okay, and that's how I taught myself. Yeah, I mean, we're talking, you know, I, you know, we have a lot of younger viewers. I don't think you realize this is before even VHS. This is before you could just, you know, pause on a frame to learn how to draw things. It was a lot harder. Uh, you guys have no idea how easy you have it with the Internet now. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you couldn't get the material. Yeah. You know, it was nothing to, uh, you, you, if you were lucky if you could get, you know, uh, because they, they, uh, pirated films were was a real you know uh, uh they, they cracked down hard on that yeah uh, back then you know but anyway so they released these home thing these home versions that you could you know show at parties and what have you so i learned that and then i got a, a chance to get hired on uh well what i did was i did my my film i did a two i did two you know pencil tests mm -hmm. and um and sent them off to Disney, and they came back and said, "I'm sorry, you don't uh, you don't draw well enough, but you have a good sense of entertainment." So that was fine. But six months, five or six months later, I got hired on at School of Visual Arts, rather mm -hmm. uh, at the New York uh, New York Institute of Technology on Tubby the Tuba. 
I do remember that. Yes. Okay. And and that was uh, staffed by a bu- all of these old Popeye and Mighty Mouse and Fleischer animators. Okay. And that's where I learned for 14 months every day uh, learning how to how to in between how to clean up and then they would uh, i I'd, I'd bring in an animation scene of, of my own and they would flip it and uh and they'd give me pointers and such so that's how i i really learned yeah i mean that's that's one thing that's really lost today you know we talk about uh, education we talk about learning and uh you know it you know back then and i think we need to reinstitute this that that we don't see a lot of like a real apprenticeship you know um people they go to school now they get their degree and they get thrown into the workforce you know for better for worse but you know especially with animation and with comics and in any art form like that there was you know mentoring and an apprenticeship oh yeah you were part of a team yeah or at least you were part of a crew where you could go to somebody who knew a lot more than you did you know yeah because you didn't no one really unless you were a really top-notch animator you worked in studio mm. you know you didn't work at home so yeah. there was always this back and forth which is what we did at Nelvana. so that's another that's but that's down the road a bit uh, but i so that's how i got into the business and after uh, doing that i got on to raggedy Ann and andy which is which was being directed by richard williams who directed roger rabbit and so I got my chance, you know, uh, to be an assistant, a cleanup assistant, and a supervising assistant on that. And it's from that way. The, uh, then I got, actually, I was uh, given, I got a, a, a letter from Frizz Freeling, oh, who wow. was looking for young talent to go to California or to, uh, I got the, the, the letter said, you know, if you're ever in, um, in California, Please look me up, and if you're looking for an animation job, you know, come and see me. And that's how I got hired on. It was Frizz who hired me to uh, to work on, um, you know, on uh, baggy pants and the nitwits and and uh, and uh, uh, was it uh, what's new, Mister Magoo? Yeah, yeah, no, that was that was a whole nother. Yeah, they were kind of they had their own. Um, definitely had a house style. As yes. I recall. Um, cool. But it's, it's, you know, interesting. I want to backpedal a little bit uh, to Richard Williams, uh, who mm-hmm. sadly passed away uh, last year. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I I don't know him. I've never met him. I, I, but he is considered, like, the animator's animator, right? He's a legend. Right. Um, I mean, what, The Thief and the Cobbler took... Well, it was still never finished, right? It was, like, 30 years, I think, they worked on that? Well, he sponsored... You know, that was his baby. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, as everything else in Hollywood, the babies get, you know, they're thrown out with the bath. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, things changed. And he, he did so much. He he ran his uh, his commercial house in England, mm-hmm. you know, London uh, it was a Soho. And uh, he poured everything, his personal money into the film wow. to do that. He, you know, he spent, you know, what, 15 years. You know, he was trying. He was trying to get money left, right, and center to do his, you know, his film. Yeah. So, if only they had so Indiegogo. Or, that, it got messed up, yeah. Yeah, if only they had Indiegogo or Patreon or Kickstarter or something like that back <laughs> then. You know, what a, what a, again, you know, kids today they don't know how easy uh, they have it compared to how it used to be. You know, what well, was always tough. There's the thing is that you know, even as a, as, as a as as a young guy, uh, you know trying to get to break in it was still tough because there hadn't been any new blood in the industry for 20 years mm. you know there hadn't been any new anime uh, students because when tv came technology always rears its ugly head yeah. in some yeah. way shape or form so when <clears throat> all of those uh hollywood studios you know shut down where were all the other where the animators were, were going to go so Hanna barbara opened up but yeah. you know once again, you know, so they only had enough work. So from like 1955 to 75, there weren't any new young people really coming into the business. So the average age of an animator was about 55. 
Yeah, well, there's a reason they call them the nine old men, right? Because they oh, well, yeah. have any, any new blood for a while. But uh, yeah, I mean that that is true because you look back, you you look back at a lot of the like the great animated movies, and you see the same names come up again and again and again and again. <laughs> and it's uh, you know definitely it's a different time. But it took you know like you said, it was very hard. It was very hard industry to crack and and, yeah. and to master. You know. Yeah. Um. So now you're working for um uh, first Freeling. Okay. Yeah after raggedy ann which is vastly underrated movie by the way i remember watching it all the time when i was a kid and um and then what happens okay well i had done a detour between raggedy ann to to, to frizz freeling mm -hmm. uh, was uh I, I i worked at nelvana up for uh, uh jerry potterton uh, now that name is uh, it should be interesting because he worked on yellow submarine oh he okay. took over he took over uh, uh, he uh, replaced uh, uh, Dick Williams as the supervising director too, because we were uh, we were uh, 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 behind schedule, over budgeted, and needed to cram it through. You know, uh, and so uh, he uh, he came through. Uh, uh, this is through December. I mean, he had started up. And he had taken over for about a few months prior to that, in, in October, September of uh, '76, and you know we're we're working away like crazy. He comes into my room where we're doing overtime, trying to crank out the scenes, uh, and I thought he was going to ask what was you know what was my schedule like, you know how 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 quickly could I get through with this? He said one of his a friend of his in toronto had an animation studio and they needed a new an, an animator to replace somebody who, an animator who had broken his wrist and they needed somebody and i was expecting my one of my in betweeners uh, to uh, to say uh, well i'll, I'll they'll, they'll he'll go there he, he this person was canadian and and was from montreal mm -hmm. and he said i don't want to go to toronto so i said i'll go okay and that's how i got up to nelvana <laughs> Well, that's what was funny because you know when we start talking, I'm like, well, well, clearly he's in the states, but I'm like, how did he get to Novan? Is he Canadian? Did he move down here? What happened? No, well, that's the story. That's how I got yeah. that. I got involved with Novana. So I did. I worked on 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 a Cosmic Christmas, mm -hmm. which is the film that George Lucas saw that uh, from Novana and said, I want them to do the Star Wars holiday special animation. Okay. And I did the I did the the uh, the spacemen in mm -hmm. the, the Cosmic Christmas and the three pa uh, the the parents mom dad and granny so there's 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 all of that 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 comes into the mix he sees that in at a screening at the uh, at Viacom where mm -hmm. Anna was the animation arm for you know, was going to do a, a series that's uh, they had signed a, a contract to do a series of holiday specials and. You know, uh, a Cosmic Christmas was the first one. So anyway, I go. I I am in um, at the patty now. Okay, mm -hmm. and I get a phone call, and it's one of, and one of the producers from Nelvana asking me to come back to Canada, you know, as a full time job on staff, and I'll get all the paperwork and everything, and you know, and relocate totally up to Canada. Wow. For that. Okay. That. How, so that's how I got involved with Nelvana and it was through you know knowing you know working at at, at the various uh, I, I, the, the best way I can explain it is I got to work with the old pros from the 30s and 40s and that's yeah. how I, that's where I my training comes from and 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 again this is I, I don't mean to be controversial about this at all but Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, two of the nine old men of Disney, they said that it takes 10 years to become an animator. Mm. Okay. And, and I learned, and everybody complains about that. And they said, well, I, I understood it because it takes about five years to learn the basics. Okay. Yeah. To be solid in your basics. And it takes another five years to hone your craft. Mm -hmm. And then when you, after 10 years, you really have it at your fingertips. That's where you, you that's how it, it really worked out for me personally. But when I, when I was uh, hired by Frizz Freeling 
as an animator, even if it was a junior animator, it was still as an animator, it was a journeyman animator. Yeah. It was a validation saying that you can animate because he was looking at my work. Yeah. And it was, and oh, and, and again, um, I'm backing, backtracking a little bit. That is, then uh, at, while I was at, before I got the order, the, uh, the request to come back and, you know, uh, the, uh, to, to uh, Nelvana, I tried to reapply to Disney. Okay. And I was saying, okay, well, I've got, it, it was only like a two and a half years between the two years. I, got, I had my mm -hmm. I, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, letter of rejection. So I said, okay, I've got two features under my belt. A season in, in you know, uh, with uh, with Frizz Freeling on, you know, uh, as experience. I said, well, I should be able to, you know, at least be, you get uh, a consideration. Turns out, according to them, I was too old and too experienced to be molded by Disney. Uh, that doesn't surprise me, actually. Well, it doesn't surprise yeah. me at all. <laughs> well, that, that's why I never went to work. I never worked yeah. at Disney. You know, so... That's the, the that's that that sort of ties that little story there. Yeah, they um I don't think it's really the case so much now, but I know for the longest time that they had a Disney way of doing things and you were basically if you had the the raw ability they would take you, but yeah, they wanted you to to do things Disney's way and you know, if you're you're too old, it's kind of like uh Yoda and Star Wars, you know, too old for the training. You're too old for the <laughs> training. Um, it's probably just an excuse, but, uh, you know, cause older people do cost more, <laughs> but, uh, I well, think... whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I understand. So, okay. Um, so where are we at now? You got, you, you took the roundabout, you got rejected by Disney again. Yeah. And so now I go back. So then I get the, the phone call a couple of weeks later, uh, from the, uh, Nelvana producers and mm -hmm. they say, oh, we want you to come in and and and, and animate uh, uh, full time for us because they were already getting ready for uh, to do in their in the long run uh, the their feature, Rock and Rule. Yeah, they hadn't really called it Drats yet, hadn't done yeah. anything, but they knew that they wanted to do that, so they needed they needed people with experience to do that, and I was the only one they knew of that had two years two features under his belt. Um, rock and roll for those of you who don't know. Okay. It's, it's actually one of my, one of my favorite animated movies of all time. Love this movie. Uh, love it, love it, love it. And, uh, I remember watching it actually when I was a kid on, uh, HBO. I think I watched it on HBO or Cinemax, but, uh, amazing, amazing piece of animation that we'll never see anything like this again, <laughs> you know, today, because it was such a risk. Uh, yeah. this movie was, wasn't it? Oh yes. Oh yeah, Definitely. I mean, it the it, it is a a rock and roll movie, but it's still I think it still has the because we were so raw when mm -hmm. we did it. We were a raw talent, very young. I mean, I was one of the oldest ones there, and when we started on that, I was thirty years old. Yeah, and I was one of the oldest uh, uh, people at, at the studio. So, uh, but but it was a you know you could you could uh, name out their uh, the uh, the uh, the uh the bands you know uh, cheap oh, yeah. trick earth wind and fire blondie uh lou reed iggy pop am i missing anybody oh um cheap trick do we get cheap trick yeah, we we get said, cheap, trick. Uh, cheap trick yeah yeah it's kind of a who's anyway. who of uh you know um it was almost like they just like took cbgb and just like dumped them into this movie right it was like <laughs> like all the bands of that that era uh all the punk bands the early punk bands uh lou reed and uh yeah it was like you know that whole era and that's one of the reasons i really wanted to have you on uh john is because that whole era for me was i don't even know what they call it like when all these rock and roll movies came out in the 70s and 80s and they were very experimental they were more adult than they were for kids and we were seeing crazy things done in animation 2d animation that has never been done since and and you just don't see that anymore. It's, um, and it only lasted maybe a decade, maybe. I mean, maybe it started with like Fantastic Planet and then just kind of ended by like yeah. the, the mid eighties. But it's almost it almost feels like they were trying to animate, you know, Heavy Metal magazine or something. Literally, we had a Heavy Metal movie in there too. But, but I wish there was a name for this genre because we have all these, you know. Forgotten, sadly, gems that kind of fit into this category, and Rock and Roll is definitely one of one of the best. Uh, absolutely, yeah. 
Thank you. Well, the thing about that is that the, the characters, the, just the energy was raw. They were trying mm -hmm. to break away. Oh, yeah, you, had, you had Ralph Bakshi, okay, yeah. who was doing all his stuff, his very his straight stuff. He, he was doing stuff for, you know, because he was on a, on a low budget. And he really didn't want to have more than just, you know, one or two takes at yeah. all on his stuff. He's a, he's a Terry Toon guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, he was. Yeah. But, you know, he, he took over the studio and, you know, he did the last few th uh, seasons at Terry, at Terry Toons. And it was very young when he was doing it. Mm -hmm. But um, the, I think, I think the, the, the aspect of it is that, that uh, the, the animation that you were talking about was to get away. Well, first of all, no one cared. OK, yeah. uh, it wasn't considered to be a money making proposition. Mm -hmm. So those those people who actually did these films, um, I mean, like we were over budget at 10 million dollars Canadian on rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. You know, consider to that. I mean, what ten million dollars is what an episode of uh, of uh, of uh, of, uh, of uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so but we were all doing stuff and it was full of energy basically and that's really what we had going for us was raw energy and trying to do stuff it was a it was a very much of a garage band attitude yeah it you know and the same with um you know having worked in comics the same with comic books you know in that era uh it did feel very i guess it's pretty appropriate you had the bands in it it felt very punk it felt very like there's something in the air with the music, with the art being produced, with the, you know, all just felt like it all kind of came together, you know. Well, at Novana, it was basically they were all artists or 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 rock and roll musicians. Mm. It was really that way. I mean, uh, you could have picked any three people out of the the paint department at uh, you know uh, doing cell painting and or xeroxing or animation. Uh, they they all could have fit into Omar's band, you know. Yeah, yeah. that's basically what it was because they're all age. They're all, as I said, it's between the ages of twenty two to thirty. Yeah. And I think that's what, what why if you know when you look at it and just don't don't try and say oh well don't nit nitpick it just re listen to it look at it and, uh, and, and see and feel the energy coming out of it. That's really what you want out of a movie, you know? So anyway. Yeah, no, no, that's great. Cause it, I mean, that, that movie had a uh, pretty huge impact on me when I was a kid. I actually had the, one of the first comics I got was they had a rock and roll comic book. It was <laughs> a cinema and they'd actually taken stills from the movie yeah. And it was one of the first comic books I ever bought. And it was really expensive back then. It was like a five or six dollar comic book. And and uh, I remember reading, I just reading and rereading in the back. They they talked to, you know, the crew at Nelvana and they had interviews and all kinds of stuff. And the one thing that and I asked you about this actually on Twitter before we talked that I remember still to this day was they had a whole segment talking about the demon at the end being animated with cow brains. Right. Yeah. Is that actually what happened? Yeah, they used uh, okay. <laughs> You, <laughs> yeah, uh, what they did was uh, they, they, they went and were trying to figure out what kind of textures to use, okay? Yeah. So we had, we had a, a, an Oxbury camera, a very top-of-the-line uh, uh, animation camera that went up about, oh, eight, eight feet high, you know? Right. And so it was a multiplane camera. Yeah. And, and what we did was... Uh, they would be shooting that and using it. They would put. Uh, they they went out and, and to a butcher shop and got cow brains, you know, because they needed texture for the beast, um, uh, for for the for the for the body of the of the beast that right. comes out at the end. So instead of doing anything, what they did was just poke these things around under camera with different lighting and and then do filters and whatnot and coming in and out and doing all all sorts of different ways to buy pack later on because everything was done in camera or yeah. or at least you would have you know, you would spend you would, that was definitely a money shot you know yeah. but they would, they would spend the money on that but that's what they did and so instead of trying to draw this stuff and animate it well you've got that all, already there so 
yeah, that, that's 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 uh, that's very true. They use cow brains. I, I don't think Disney ever would have used cow brains. <laughs> for anything but no it's so cool because you think about like now you know kids today they're like oh, i got my texture pack with my photoshop and my whatever it's like no dude they use they use cow brains that, cow is, brain. that is hardcore that is hardcore yeah. all right so all right. you're working so we skipped uh we skipped the holiday special a little bit you talked um now you did all of boba fett's you did all of boba, yeah, fett's? I did all of boba yeah i did all of boba fett yeah, okay. I, I animated all of it. Uh, I had assistants and 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 cleanup artists to work with me on that. Uh, so yeah, that's what I, I did. That it was it was kind of what happened is that after about a mu- after about three weeks, um, I come back, come I did a whole bunch of scenes, and I, I come back into the studio and uh, I was away on uh, for Thanksgiving and came back. And I was told, well, we need you to do the the the, the hero, uh, Dan Mouse, because the animator who was doing it couldn't handle it, and he left. And so that's what happened. I I got switched over to do Dan Mouse because there was a lot of him to do. Yeah, yeah. And he did a lot of singing, and there was a lot of songs and and whatnot. And uh, and so uh, Frank Nissen, the designer of, you know, for he was a, sort of the head animator mm-hmm. there. And he took he 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 went back and and did, and did the devil, but they had to remove all of the stuff that I did because it wouldn't have worked. Our, our styles yeah. are so totally different. Yeah, so that, yeah, people don't understand that. Like like especially older school animators, everybody has a, almost like a, a fingerprint. You can see, you know, that's like I said about um, you know, I saw with your your Batman stuff. I, I was like, man, it kind of reminds me of Richard Williams a little bit uh, because there are certain things that certain animators do, and even with the Disney movies, you know, it's not as homogenous as it is now. Like you're going to work in the house style and everybody draws the same, you know? No, no. Everybody had their own style. Yes. Yeah. 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 You, you develop it. I, in fact, in fact, one of the scenes that I, I worked on the Patty, at the Patty Freeling on, on uh, the uh, uh, baggy pants, a uh, uh, villain. Yeah, you, it's just, it, it's innocuous scene. It's just a villain gets up, from uh, from uh, a hospital bed, and he, he 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 wakes up, and then gets up, and then turns and walks off. Well, now how would you? A friend of mine that I worked with, uh, you know, like at at uh, at at um, at Nelvana, mm. pointed out to me that when I showed up, he said, "Did you see do that scene where he gets up?" And so it described it exactly. How would he know? But he knew my style. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know one thing because you know we're talking about uh, Raggedy Ann and Andy, and a, a lot of people have in their prime like, why are you talking about Raggedy Ann and Andy? It's like, uh, no, the movie was actually really, really good. But the one thing that jumped out at me even when I was a kid was uh, all of the the actors in the movie were all animated by a different person, and they mm-hmm. actually gave everybody credit. You know, so and so did this character, and so and you can see it when you watch the movie. You know, you can see there's a different there's a difference in style between the different people working on it. I mean, it all works, but it's not like now where a lot of these movies is like you can't they could just replace people and you would have no idea who's doing what scene. Yeah, well, and that was the case. I mean, you had you you were you know I mean uh, some people could not handle all of the same ca- the characters. You know, like they had some people working under them. But you still had, you know, Tisa David was doing Ann and Andy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Art Abbott was doing the the camel, uh, the, the camel with wrinkled knees. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, oh, what was his name? Um, what did the the, uh, the taffy pit? Um, it was oh, the greedy, wasn't it? The greedy. The greedy, yeah. yeah. The greedy, the pat- uh, oh, geez, what is his name? I'm, I'm having a senior moment. Um, anyway. They were all had their own, you know, they had their own specific style. And mm-hmm. you could see as soon as one, you know, if, if you had to match with them, it was very difficult to do. So they handle all of the, the major, you know, scenes and allowed others to, to work around them. Yeah. So. It, it's it's interesting because even when I was a kid, like I noticed sometimes like there'd be a scene that would have the, the primary character and then maybe like Raggedy and Andy would come in, but they wouldn't look quite the same in that scene as they did in the other one that was just them by themselves. 
You know, right. as a kid, I didn't understand, like, how come they look a little shorter, a little squatty, or a little whatever? And it's because that wasn't the main character that that animator was working on. They just mm-hmm. happened to be in the scene with them, you know? Right. So little yeah. things like that. But you, again, you don't you don't really get that, I think, with the um, kind of the, the production line uh, approach to animation now, where you've got, you know, 100 people working on Elsa's hair or something, you know? <laughs> Well, that's the thing is is that it is a different. It is completely different. You know, you can't do. You know, I mean, you an animator back then. I mean, you had your pencil, your paper, and your feelings for what the character was going to be. Then you had. Then you put up put design on top of that. But mm. you know, you could do. You could animate a scene without with just stick figures with just you know circles and eyes and you know arms here and there what you could follow the movement and the acting you could do that and then you throw and once you've got that done then you throw everything else on top of it yeah so yeah and people don't seem to understand the the underlying and that's the same with you know any drawing really any any craft is the underlying uh structure of it mm-hmm. not not the window dressing you know but right. you got to understand how all the moving parts work and then you can paint it That's right you know? so just like building a house i always tell people it's like building a house you know <laughs> as long as the insides are good that's whatever color you paint it that's whatever but uh, you got to make sure everything's going to work and the house isn't going to fall down yeah <laughs> so okay so you're still in the van did you work on the the care bears movie because i know that came i think that came after I came after. Yeah, I was, oh yeah, I, I did that as freelance after I left. I was already at uh, at um, um, what was it? Uh, was it uh, no, no, it was before filmation. It was in between um, uh, a Bluth and uh, in filmation. Oh, uh, I was at Ruby Spears. Oh, Ruby Spears. Okay, that was like now. Okay, I'm. I always got confused. Ruby Spears' relation to Hanna Barbera is what? Because I was they, they, they were jobbers. They 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 uh, they uh, did outsource material. They was they were a a, sh- a union shop. Okay. but it was when they had when when Hanna Barbera had a a ton of money, a, a ton of of shows, and they couldn't handle it even within house. They would use Ruby and Spears. Okay, because yeah, some of the Han Barbera shows had just Han Barbera, and other ones had the you know at the end they had Han Barbera and Ruby right. Spears, and that's kind of like that's, okay. that's where that's okay. where I was doing Turbo Team. Oh, I remember okay. Turbo Team turned into okay, a car. Turbo Team, and uh, and also worked on uh, I did one or two uh, uh, episodes of uh, of uh, the um, uh, Dragon Slayer TV show. Yeah, I you know it's weird because I remember that was a weird time too. Uh, Every video game had a TV show, didn't they? The Pac-Man, uh-huh. yeah. Cuba, you know, the, 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 the monkey, a uh, Donkey Kong, or yeah, they whatever. Had the, the, the was it Saturday Supercade or Saturday where they had a bunch of different they video were. games. Yeah, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was it. But uh, the the one the, one of the most memorable things for uh, for me was in uh, this was again I was working at at. Uh, um, at um, at Ruby and Spe- Ruby and Spears, and uh, I, I was just going to lunch, or I was just in the hallway or whatnot, and suddenly I see this short guy, really tough looking guy, with somebody you know, big tall guy behind him helping him along and whatnot, and I realized as he walked into walked past me and into the uh, to the elevator to go upstairs, it was Jack Kirby. Oh my gosh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> They, they crack a smile. They crack a smile. No, no, no. I think he had a cigar in his mouth or something, and you know that was that was that. Um, oh, jeez, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that's, that was that. That was why he was doing all his. He he had started to work for for the shows, designing. Yeah, he uh, Thundar the Barbarian. I think was his, yeah. wasn't it? And um, yeah, I remember that he did a lot of and uh, a lot of uh, Alex Toth. I think uh, jump mm-hmm. ship. To animation too he was doing you know johnny quest and um yeah it's kind of like today you get a lot of comic book artists jumping ship to movies and video games you know right right yeah. right right uh so um well yeah um but uh, the uh, the thing with the star wars holiday special we had a very short turnaround time yeah yeah and uh and so uh that was something that we, you know, we were very conscious of, and so, uh, as I said, I I managed to get 
well, as, as recompense for, uh, you know, for being taken off of the devil, I got to do the, the villain in the next show. Yeah, so, which is pretty cool because there, you actually, we actually saw more Boba Fett in the holiday special than we did in any of the movies. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was, like, you have to be watching Return of the Jedi and be like, hey, that's that guy worked on, now he's down in the pit, and now he's gone, and he's been burnt yeah. up, and that's that's it. That's it. <laughs> I, and, and I realized, and I said, after I'd seen, you know, the the, the trilio said, I I, I I I played Boba Fett more than any other actor. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta ask you, have you have you seen the Mandalorian yet, John? No, I have to say, no, I don't get uh, Disney Plus. Okay, I, um, they look. It's I, I'm sure you've heard this from many people. It's basically a live action version of some of the sequences we saw in the holiday special. They yeah. even got the weapon, the uh, the pitchfork weapon, the uh, amp. What they call? They've got a Star Wars name for it, Am, Ambin Phase Pulse Blaster, which hasn't been seen since the holiday festival or holiday festival holiday special i'm man my i'm all it's the holidays i've I'm really got this post holiday thing going on but it hasn't been seen uh since then it was not seen boba fett didn't have that gun in the movies but they gave it to the mandalorian on the show which i thought was kind of a cool nod to what you did yeah well i think it's interesting i've seen some clips of it on on tv you know where i see you know uh uh but boba uh, i'm sorry boba fett the mandalorian you know you know tilting his head up and down and what and then pulling out his blaster and sort of slink he he, he does this 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 uh gunfighter mm-hmm. shift you know and i said well that's how i have him backing away to get out of uh the into the airlock at the end last scene of the holiday special you know yeah it was really straight like watch I, I love the mandalorian by the way i don't like the disney sequel trilogy at all that's a whole nother that's several hundred videos we've done but but i did like uh we did like the mandalorian and watching it yeah i was just like that's from the holiday special that's from the hop this is basically the, the holiday special in live action is what this is uh-huh. well so, there you go hit that's, him up for some royalty least, tricks. <laughs> well at least I, no 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 royalty at, at all <laughs> Except, except the thing is that no one can say again. No one could say that they they did Boba Fett animated Boba Fett other than myself. So it's kind of like okay, it's like it's like being Shane, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I just thought that was very cool. And they had they 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 know on some level they know because we went to Star Wars Celebration in Chicago this year, and the only thing I picked up and I sent you a picture of it is I got my my animated Boba Fett lunchbox. My mm-hmm. wife got it for me, and that's the only thing I wanted from the show. They had all the stuff, and I'm like, no, I, the only thing I wanted is that Boba Fett lunchbox. And <laughs> I think they knew because the Mandalorian was coming out, and I think that was kind of their way of saying, hey, this is really where this came from. You know? Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's good because I, 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 uh, it, it's it's a very interesting. Uh, it's, uh, it's you just say okay, I did that. That happened, and you just uh, say okay, that's part of my. Uh, yeah. That's part of my my DNA, or whatever. I don't yeah. know. Well, it's cool though. It's cool that uh, you know they've, they've got so many references to it, and I think I think I heard they were going to bring it out on Blu-ray or something, the holiday special, uh, after all these years. But uh, well, maybe they should just do the the short. I mean yeah. that. that That'd be done that way. So, uh, so yeah. you know. did you work on um, uh, droids or Ewoks, or was that? Uh, after no, I was time? asked to direct to to be the go between between Nelvana and Lucasfilm okay. to do that to do the storyboards and whatnot. But I knew, you know, that this that the the craziness of what would happen, I just wasn't ready. I just didn't want to do it. You know, I would yeah. make it would that that is not the type of and, and it wouldn't have been a very good, you know, other than a general, you know, paying job. But I knew what kind of what kind of problems there would be story wise that having to do the fix ups of the storyboards and all that. Yeah, I just didn't want to do it. I you know. I mean, uh, that was a, that was a, what I consider to be a smart move on my part. Yeah, cause, yeah, maybe you dodged a bullet, but um, I do know that they uh, the droid designs were kind of lifted from the um, from the holiday special. Um, well, yeah, so very similar. Yeah, so I mean, obviously it was Novana, but I remember, you know, actually I, I saw the droids before I saw the holiday special when I was a kid, and I was kind of like, you know, why do they look this way? And then I saw the holiday special years later. I'm like, oh, I get it. Now it's the same people. Same people. Yeah. Did that. 
<laughs> so that explains it. But um, so tell me about you. You did some work for Filmation. We talked a little bit before. You worked on the original Shira, and that's something we we talk a lot about on the show because it is my wife's all time favorite cartoon series. Mm-hmm. Well, Shira and He Man, and 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 then worked at uh, on on the on the uh, the, the the low budget. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, features that they were trying to do. Mm. Uh, they, were try- they, were, they were trying to figure out a way to keep things going and uh, doing their versions of, uh, of Pinocchio and Snow White and what have you. And, I and, remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you know, they were trying. To, that they were they were trying to do it. Uh, and this is again before the uh, Mouse Detective mm. and, and and before uh, Roger Rabbit and before. Um, uh, uh, the the little uh, the little mermaid, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, this was at at the time where uh, the when um, when Disney was actually thinking of shutting down the animation department, and so you know there was really not much money in in the business for animation, and so filmation was trying to not just you know they were getting they were getting a you know a certain amount of money from. Uh, you know, from He Man and Shira, mm-hmm. but they didn't own the property, so they were trying yeah. to figure out ways of doing what was in you know versions of, of of fairy tales that were in public domain, and figuring out a way to to crack the uh, you know the uh, uh, the home mo- movie market at least you know doing that sort of thing. So the budgets were you know were non-existent. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. So. Well, we're um, we're right outside Pittsburgh, and uh, they uh, had uh, kind of a uh, shrine to Lou Scheimer here. They have <laughs> a lot of his equipment because he's from Pittsburgh, and and uh, that was in the Tunesium, I think. Unfortunately, they shut it down, but it was really cool to see a lot because they did talk a lot about some of the the, the lesser known filmation endeavors, you know, <laughs> beyond yeah, beyond and Shira. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of them didn't didn't quite work out that well. But yeah, and that's unfortunate. But that's you know, actually, you know, Lou was the best, you know, boss I worked for. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard nothing but good about him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He respected the artists. He really respected people, and and uh, he was trying to keep all animation, you know, with you know, under one roof and and doing everything in the United States. And you can't do anything other than respect a man for doing that. Yeah, I well, we heard. Um there's a show i don't know if you've seen it, it's on uh, netflix john it's uh the toys that made us and they talk about the history of the toy industry and they did an episode on he-man and okay. they actually talked to uh, erica scheimer and okay. she was explaining her dad uh basically pushing for 65 episodes uh, for syndication to make sure everybody had a job all year round which yeah. I thought was really cool because, you know, like you're saying, you know, the journeyman, the freelance life and, and he wanted to make sure his people were, uh, were taken care of, you know, and right. that's why he pushed for, you know, talking networks in the 65 episodes. Like, no, 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 you have to do 65 episodes. And he gave him some reason, but basically it was to make sure his people had work all year round, which I thought was well, incredibly cool. Yeah, That was part of, well, well, first of all, they were going to do a syndicated show. You needed, you know, a, a season. If you're going to do a daily show, you needed to have, 65 episodes because you can't repeat the same you know uh, uh you know same show you know you know uh, more than once every 13 weeks mm-hmm. yeah yeah because you know you get like that one kid that would tune in once tune in a couple of weeks later be like it's just reruns <laughs> you know, yeah. Come back. Yeah, you, yeah you lose your audience real fast how many times can you reread the same comic book especially if they're <laughs> if they keep re-releasing it yeah that's why when I was a kid, I loved the choose your own adventure books because you could read them more than one time and you'd pick a different ending. I always cheated. I always went to the back and saw what the best ending was and then I worked my way backwards, but that was me. That was me. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about your Indiegogo and then I want to talk uh, about, um, you know, maybe some advice you have for people that, that maybe want to get into animation now or, you know, maybe tell them not to get into animation now. I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, well, you, can't, you can't tell somebody not to do something. All you could do is say is t- give them some advice of how to survive. Right, right. So I have your Indiegogo pulled up. Rough sketch, and 
uh, an animation comic book portfolio, and uh, it's got a lot of the uh, a lot of the properties we talked about here. We've got, of course, Boba Fett and Batman and Dragon's Lair and Rock and Roll. Highest possible recommendation, people. If you haven't watched it yet, track a copy down. It's an amazing movie. I freaking love it. And um, yeah, so what uh, what will people get if they back your Indiegogo, John? Okay, there are there are three different three at this point uh, four different um, levels. If you just want to do the assistant animator, that's ten dollars, and you get uh, a DVD, or rather a, a PDF of uh, of uh, a rough uh, a rough uh, sketch, mm-hmm. which is eighty four pages, and then you get also um, one of my uh, Snuffy and Zoe books, okay. which is which is you know what to do, what do you do with a stinky pirate, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. What, what do you do with this thing? No, you got back at the well, sure yeah, no, There's a song. I, I, you, I, I, I've written down lyrics to her, her song, so it's one of the inside pages, you know, and you get that. Um, and it's really, it's, you know, it, it, so you get, you get that for $10, you know, and uh, so that, there's that. For, uh, for uh, assistant animator, you get, um, no, uh, that's the assistant animator. The journeyman animator in the middle of, of, of the track is you get, you know, a, a a full copy, you know, print copy of uh, of rough sketch, and okay. uh, and then also the 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 the, uh, the PDFs of those two of the two books too. Okay, and then in then for uh, that's for that's for twenty dollars for uh, for as a, as a master animator you get a, a you get uh, um, those those uh, those elements there plus a a an original a Boba Fett sketch that I'll draw. Oh. You know that I'm drawing. Yeah, and 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 you'll see what the what the pose is. It's all going to be the same pose, but I'm still drawing it brand new for for each one. Oh, that's so, awesome! So you know, so you get so for 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 so that's for forty dollars, and it's all all has for shipping. And then the yeah. last one is the John the Animator special. I think it is called. I can't remember. Yep, yep. But I'm looking at it right that, now. Yep. Okay, and then and then that has. You you could get you get all that plus a second copy of you know there's some people who wanted more than one copy of the book mm-hmm. you know so there, this one is sixty bucks and you get two copies and the sketch and and the and the PDFs. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of good advice in here, and I, you know that, that's people don't understand. Um, you know, even in comics and and you know animation, obviously that. You know, they might be like, well, this doesn't, this advice doesn't apply to me. This life story doesn't, because things are so much different now than they were then. But I, I don't believe that. I think that uh, you can always learn from people who have been there, done that, and you need to know where you've come from to see where you're going. And, you know, we have a lot of people that watch this channel that are really interested in the animation industry now. Obviously, it's changed a lot. A lot of people would say it hasn't changed for the better, but um, it has become more. I guess uh, I don't know. It's it's more assembly line now, but uh, it's always been an assembly line. Um, I think what it is, and I thought about this, uh, and that is, you have to understand, um, you know, uh, drawing. Mm. You have to be able to understand composition. You have to, you know, study composition. Just do whether you do a you pencil sketching or a or or, or on, on a tablet or what have you. But understand posing, a uh, quick sketch. Understand balance of a character. Understand what makes something works. Uh, uh, understand, learn the principles of animation: the squash and stretch, mm. timing. Don't you know? It's like being a musician. You may just have a computer to do all your manipulations on, but you better understand how the uh, how how music is made and why those notes sound the way they sound. If you understand all that, then when you're given a assi- an assignment, you know, uh, say a computer animation assignment or what have you, you will be able to make something breathe and and give life to it without. You know, uh, doing uh, you know a, a rotoscope or 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 or, or, or having to deal with um, a, a relying upon motion capture. You know, even even when you're a kid, even when you're just given fur, well, how does that fur flow? If you're making it flow, 
how do you how do you make it how do you give it a feeling of of softness yeah 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 it's amazing to be able to do that with a pencil isn't it to, to have all that it, that texture and and life and and movement um you know to do that with to be able to do that with a, just a just a plain old pencil mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and um I, I think a lot of people i think you know with with digital technology no, i can't say anything because i work primarily on a digital tablet now anyway just because of speed but um there's definitely i think something lost when you rely too heavily on on technology now to do the work for you you know do the thinking well, for you if the if the if, if the electricity goes out you still have to draw yeah well we <laughs> talked about before we recorded and i'm gonna i'm gonna send you a link to the video it's really funny just talking about uh, all this um but toy story 2 i don't know if people know the story but we almost lost toy story 2 because it was all it was 100 percent digital and uh, somebody at pixar had accidentally deleted the movie the entire movie and the only reason there's a toy story 2 now is because uh, a woman was working at home i don't know if she's mm -hmm. one of the producers i think or storyboard artist but she had an entire copy a backup of toy story 2 and that's the only reason we have that movie. If it had been obliterated, there weren't any cells to go back to. There wasn't any any kind of a hard copy at all. So I agree with that. I think you need to have some kind of a hard copy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All, right. all right. Is there anything else you want to talk about, John, before we go? Well, uh, I, I'll just give a, just a plug for the next uh, uh, um, you know crowdfunder, which is when I start launching. Uh, the, the John uh, John the Animator comics, which is okay. I'll start doing my my Snuffy and Zoe series and Mega Moose, you know, and it's aimed at uh, the the you know uh, basically it's like my the the types of comic books that I enjoyed reading when I was from the ages of say uh, five and six up until I was twelve or thirteen, you know. So it has that still kind of golden age mm -hmm. comics in nineteen. Uh, the 50s and 60s kinds of storytelling one uh, you know one story complete story in each uh, in each uh, each uh, uh, book so and that's what I'm that's those are my next projects awesome yeah it's good to see you doing some comics we need more we need more comics good comics um, I know you know it's funny you mentioned that because I worked on Disney comics for a number of years and that's one thing I've loved about the Dell comics you know the Donald Duck comics was it was kind of a one and done story and then we kind of just you know sometimes you carry the carries over the, the characters over but for the most part you could pick up any comic on the rack and get mm -hmm. a complete you know beginning middle end and now with comics it's like well you know you gotta buy these nine comics and then we're crossing over with this other series and you've got a hundred and fifty dollar investment you know before it's all said and done and no i want to do entry level comics yeah you know people that get into comics and the only way you can do that is by not making it so so uh astronomically difficult to get into a storyline yeah so that's my thought yeah, no, it's a good thought, and I think I think more publishers, uh, more publishers need to to think like that. But they're thinking, you know, money and uh, trying to get people hooked. But I'm like, if you got, you know, if it's too expensive and people look at it and they're like, I'm going to invest too much in this multi whatever arc story. I don't care. They're not even going to pick the first issue up. They're like, right. I'm not going to do this. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, all right. Can you give me some links uh, where where people can find you online, John? Well, you could see uh, well uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to, I mean, just uh, just type in John Celestri, and I'm there. I got, it's, I got my my animation, uh, you know, my YouTube channel okay. where I give you stories, uh, give you uh, uh, lessons on on the pr and the principles of animation and such. So just type in John Celestri, and you'll be okay. able to find me there. Um, even if you just type in John Celestri on Google, I'm all over the place. Uh, <laughs> Well, really, quite honestly, that's yeah, no, you are. I actually did. I was like, let's let's just make sure I, I know what all you worked on. I'm like, holy smokes, he's worked on everything. <laughs> well, I, it, my 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 blog is up. Uh, it has a lot of lessons that I did. Is uh, my uh, my John Celestri dot blogspot dot com, and then also uh, it's uh, John Celestri at Celestri John on Twitter. Okay, awesome. Well, I will put links to all that in the description for this video. Uh, so, John, you're more than a man; you're a resource. <laughs> so, and uh, I would absolutely suggest anyone who wants to uh, get into animation or just you know drawing to, uh, you know, absolutely uh, check out John's stuff. He knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this for a long time, uh, and uh, you know, 
I, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate You're it. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap this one up and we will talk to you later. Thanks again for listening. More news and videos are available on our website at www.clownfishtv.com and on our YouTube channel, Clownfish TV. You can buy official merchandise, clownfish comic books, and more at shopclownfish.com. If you like this show, please consider subscribing and leaving us a positive review on iTunes and other podcast platforms. If you're looking to help support this show financially, go to clownfishsupport.com. If you'd like to sponsor an episode of this show, send us an email at business at webreef.io. This podcast is a production of Clownfish Studios, LLC, and Web Reef Media, proudly made in Pittsburgh, USA.